Hello everyone. Today I'd like to do a book review uh, on a novelette by Theodore Sturgeon. Uh, I've actually come across this in the Science Fiction Hall of Fame, which I am reading. It's a volume one. It's a big, thick book uh, with a lot of classic stories and incredible writers. The stories were all chosen by other science fiction writers. Um, and I've already reviewed Heinlein on here. Um, so now I'd like to review the Theodore Sturgeon novelette that's in that specific uh, book. Uh, the name of the uh, um, novelette is Microcosmic God. It's the first uh, Theodore Sturgeon I've read. He's been on my radar for a really long time, uh, so I'm glad that I finally got a chance to read him. This story was originally published in Astounding Science Fiction magazine in 1941. This review will contain some spoilers. Uh, I'm not going to tell you the entire story, but I am going to need to reveal a couple of things in order to be able to speak about this uh, story. Uh, there's a reclusive biochemist whose last name is Kidder, and he makes incredible inventions, inventions that really change the world. Uh, and we start from kind of the point of view of Kidder the legend. We, we're not close to him at all. Um, it's just a, a kind of a general overview of how the world feels about Kidder. He's incredibly uh, reclusive. He lives on an island uh, that he owns that he wants to be left completely alone. Um, and the only way that people can get a hold of him is uh, really through his banker. Uh, he His banker has a direct phone line to him uh, and they trade calls. Uh, every now and again, um, and his banker were every once in a while ask for new inventions or anything new that can help the world, at which point Kidder will give him stuff like, say, a cure for the cold uh, or things like that. Um, and every time something like that is released, uh, Kidder makes a whole bunch of money and so does his bank. So eventually, uh, this banker uh, becomes very powerful, uh, as does Kidder. So after we kind of get the world's idea of what Kidder is, uh, Sturgeon changes point of view and moves us directly into a close psychic distance with Kidder. And we learn that he is uh, not actually making all of these inventions. He's a biochemist, and he's obsessed with how quickly... Uh, knowledge evolves in man and he feels like um, that he can't get enough knowledge because his brain and all of humanity's brains move too slow. So what he's done on this island is created life, uh, this synthetic life um, that he's evolved to be incredibly short-lived uh, and and to move because they're smaller at a much faster rate than humans do, and he calls these uh, these creations neoterics, um, and he absolutely loves these things and learns from these things, but he he also, in a way, kind of tortures them uh, by messing with the environment in which he keeps them in. He'll kill off large amounts of them, but force them to evolve quickly. So his initial way of getting scientific advancements from them is to force them to have to evolve in a way that he wants them to, to solve a problem that he wants them to solve by introducing um, something into their ecosystem that they have to deal with. But eventually, they surpass human knowledge and human uh, intellect, and he's able to set up basically a computer screen in the, uh, in the world that they live in, and he's able to just straight up ask them for what he wants. And they create a culture that is used to getting direct instant messages from their god, asking them for technological advancements. Um, and then when he first starts doing this, if they don't follow protocol and give him what he wants, he'll punish them by killing off large chunks of them. Um, so they eventually form this society that is like, 
Our whole point of existence is to follow these prompts on the computer screen and create these scientific advancements. And if, if Kidder needs something in a couple of days, he'll just send them a prompt and they'll go through six generations of thousands of their smartest people working on these advancements. They'll get it done in two days Kidder's time, but it will be generations for them. It's really a very brilliant concept and I, I was just kind of awestruck uh, by the, the, the concept from the beginning. I know that it's become kind of a trope, um, but of the, the microcosm, they even make fun of it in Rick and Morty, that uh, Rick's battery that that makes his car function is actually a microcosm of small beings that are, are creating energy that runs his car. Um, but this came out in 1941 and is the first time that I that I've seen or the earliest I've seen this concept spoken about. I'm not hundred percent sure if people did this beforehand, but this is the earliest that I've come uh, across it. 1941. Um, so eventually uh, this uh, banker of his, his name is Conant, um, starts taking advantage of Kidder and they eventually kind of have a big showdown uh, and that's the the kind of end climax of the story. I'm not going to spoil it, um, but that's just kind of how the story goes from there. It's really interesting. Lots of action, lots of intrigue, political intrigue, and so on and so forth. Um, I just wanted to stop and talk about the characters for a second. Uh, Kidder is brilliantly written. You don't know if you should love or hate him. Um Sturgeon has created in him a kind of uh, genius that is also very childish. Kidder wants to be left alone. He wants to learn from his neoterics and he he doesn't want to have to think about or be bothered by anything outside of him. Conant, on the other hand, is ambitious to an extent that he is kind of pure evil. And there is evil in, in Kidder. Of course, the way that he treats uh, the Neoterics brings up tons of, of moral and philosophical questions. But he's infinitely more likable than Conant, which is crazy. And I like how complex Sturgeon makes his characters. Um, Conant is ambitious, and you give a man that ambitious the type of power that Kidder gave him without meaning to, uh, and of course he's going to be corrupted completely by it. Um, the characters are very well done. Um, the tech is incredible. It has an early concept of a computer um, that he uses to speak with his neoterics. The creation of life and the concept of the smaller something is, the quicker it lives. Absolutely brilliant tech in this story. Uh, I, I really, really loved it. Uh, there's also an interesting relationship between Kidder uh, and a, uh, a male engineer later on in the story, um, and they end up together is the only really real way I can describe it. And having read quite a few stories from the 40s, it was really a, a breath of fresh air to see um, a relationship, although not directly stated. Uh, it was a relationship that is obviously not 100% straight. Um, I think that there is something between these two men, a, a, a kind of love for each other, that, that Sturgeon may have been pointing towards a friendship, but I think he might have also been pointing towards something a little bit more, and it was really refreshing uh, to see that in the story of this age. Um, to rate this story, um, I loved it. It's incredibly entertaining to read. Uh, it has the awe of technology that makes science fiction great. This is 100% a classic, and I would rate it a 9 out of 10. Probably my best rating so far. Um, 
Thank you very much for watching. If you uh, enjoyed the review, please like it. If you like our content, please subscribe and we'll see you next time.